Popular Mechanics Magazine, Volume 99, February of 1953, Number 2. In this issue, for the Craftsman, 36-inch model of the SS United States, Part 3, page 214. While it was mentioned in Part 2 that the portholes are added before the hull is painted black, you may prefer to leave the ports in their natural brass finish. In this case, the hull is painted first. Also, instead of indicating the loading ports by fine white lines, it may be easier for you to do a neater job by cutting the ports from thin cardboard and then gluing them to the hull before it is painted. The slight relief is enough to make them stand out nicely, but not too prominently. Our next step in building the SS United States is to fit the wooden promenade deck. After this is sanded smooth, a 1 16th by 1 quarter inch groove is made in the center of both edges to house the strip of clear plastic which represents windows. As the shear line between stations C and G assumes a slight curve, the promenade deck likewise follows the same curve. This means that while the deck piece can be bowed, to match the shear line by simply drawing it down with two flat-headed wood screws and glue, the plastic strip cannot be bent edgewise and consequently must be cut in a curve, matching that of the groove. The windows are simulated by scratching lines on the rear side of the plastic strip, wiping the lines with white paint and then painting the back of the strip black. Each window section measures one inch and it is separated by 3 16 inch pillars which are represented with white paint. The best way to scratch the lines uniformly is to first rule a line on paper. Then, by tacking the clear plastic strip in position over the lines on the paper, you can use them as a guide in scoring the plastic. Any sharply pointed tool will do the scratch lines just fine, as you'll see in studying the section of simulated windows shown on the opposite page. Three lines are made horizontally and double lines are scratched vertically to represent individual panes. Small pieces of masking tape placed along the edges of the pillar divisions on the face side of the plastic permit a neat job of painting. Note that the plastic strip when cemented in the groove is recessed slightly from the edges on the promenade lift. Next, the upper deck lift is added as it supports the brass promenade deck. It will be more convenient to paint the edges of the lift as well as the top surface of the hull before the brass deck is screwed to the upper deck. The brass deck, being the same width as the wooden promenade deck, also overhangs the hull and is supported at the outer edges with two brass enclosure strips. The pattern for these is given full size on page 216, ready for tracing. After cutting and carefully filing each one to shape, they are fitted flush with tiny rabbits formed along the shear and held in place with household cement. The brass promenade deck merely rests on top of the edges of the enclosed strips and does not require soldering. The pattern for pieces A is likewise given actual size and, like the enclosure strips, these parts are shaped from brass for easy soldering. Two of these are needed and are soldered to the outer edges of the metal promenade deck, the aft end of the wooden promenade deck. The tiny railing, which is later applied around the edge of the metal deck, terminates at pieces A. The wooden sun deck may be added next. Note that the fore end of this piece is first recessed approximately 132 inches deep to receive flush and metal sports deck. It is well to pre-finish the edges of this lift and to fit the 64 portholes that are installed in the edges along each side. The same eyelets are used here as in the hull. The proper spacing of the ports is determined by referring back to part 1 in the profile view. The sun deck is attached with glue and screws, the screws being placed so as to be hidden by the two sports decks which top the sun deck. A total of 24 lifeboats is required, two being slightly smaller than the others. The lifeboats on the actual ship are 40 feet long and will accommodate 140 persons. Differing from the usual lifeboat, 
which is fitted with oars on the boats of the SS United States are equipped with five pairs of push-pull handles. These handles are pumped back and forth in unison to spin a propeller. On the model, the lifeboats are a mere one and one quarter inches long. And while these may be hand carved individually, they can be purchased in a kit along with the davits, portholes, propellers, anchors, winches, capson, bits, roller chocks, and other fittings. The lifeboat davits are located according to the plan view and installed in a row of tiny holes made along the edges of the promenade deck. The upper deck of the davits are pinned to the sun deck. Each cast lifeboat has tiny hooks in which it is hung from the davits with fine wire. The metal sports deck, which fits in the recessed end of the wooden sports deck, is fitted with a 1 8 inch high bulwark as shown in the drawing at the left. This is soldered to the surface of the metal deck, even with the outer edge. The same is done in the case of the metal navigating bridge deck. Stacked in order, the various lifts should look like the right-hand photo at the top of the opposite page. Fencing is still to be added to the metal decks. The radar mast is molded in clear plastic, the tiny parts being cemented together and then painted aluminum. The small window is simulated by placing a bit of masking tape over the plastic before the mast is painted. Wire railings are cemented to the edge of each platform and a machine screw is turned in a taped hole in the end of the mast to anchor it to the deck. Continued next month.